CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... have had great respect for the unyielding sea. And in Cornwall, where this tale by Conan Doyle begins, Cornish sailors have always said, those ships which will not be ruled by the rudder must be ruled by the rock. What's that you say? Shipwreck? Yes. The one word that strikes fear into every sailor's heart. Who's that letter from, Father? Your Uncle Arthur. He wants you to go up to the North Country and pay him a visit, William. Well, I could do that, couldn't I? He's not the kind of man I'd like you to visit. He says be sure you bring your gun with you. A gun? But why? Because Arthur is up to his old tricks, I expect. And his tricks spell death. <laughs> Mr. Drama, The Black Sheep and the Captain, by A. Conan Doyle, was adapted especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Jack Grimes. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. find descendants of the Hutchins family still today, living in Land's End on the Cornish coast of England, just as they did when Arthur Hutchins had his provision store on Water Street. Provisions in those days meant groceries for sailors and seamen, but Arthur also provided extra services, which went on in the back of his store. Nobody in Land's End was quite sure what Arthur was up to. There were also mysterious signals from the lighthouse, no matter what the weather. On those nights, Arthur kept his shop open very late. Hello? Arthur? Anyone here? It's Captain Tanner. Hey, come in, sir. Oh, she'll do just that. Hmm. Had a good voyage, Captain Tanner? So, so. Uh, profitable? Not as profitable as the last one. Ah, uh. You, uh, remaining in port for long? That depends. Ah. Perhaps I shall retire. You give up your ship? I've sailed 40 years since I was 10. Well, you're just in your prime, Captain. I know I am. That's why, now that I have the money, I aim to enjoy it. A little farm down the Cornwall coast. Some sheep, cows. I say on a thousand pounds, they could manage comfortably the rest of the day. <laughs> Who couldn't? You couldn't, you dear Arthur. Your neighbors couldn't, nor your relatives. But I can, because you're making it possible, eh? Hey? Ah. Well, now, don't keep an old sailor hanging from the yard. Don't let me have what I came for. You mean now? You know why I'm here. Oh, oh well, of course I do. But I, I was just wondering... Well, what is it? Surely you got an excellent price. I was thinking, Captain. Uh, oh, could you come back later? Later tonight? Why? Uh, I'm afraid the news isn't good. What news? Uh, about your retirement. Arthur, I don't understand you, and my nose is beginning to witch. You know what that means. Oh, no, 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 please, don't lose your temper, Captain Jenner. I can explain it. Well, my nose itches, that means a fight. Now, all I'm saying is, stop this ring around a road here. Let me ask what belongs to me. I wish I could. But uh, what happened was, uh, a week after you left them with me, this place was robbed. Ransacked. What? Please, Captain Tanner. Oh, get away from it. Get away. Oh, 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 o
his name was never mentioned in our house until I was 20 years old. And then I found out why. I had a very strange letter today, William. Son, you listen to me. Well, of course I am, Father. Why was it strange? Who was it from? Oh, the black sheep of the family. Uncle Arthur? Your Uncle Arthur. I don't hear one word from my brother for ten whole years. And suddenly, out of the blue, he writes. He never wrote? Not even when your mother died. And Arthur used to like her very much. Your Uncle Arthur was an extremely secretive man, and I suspect has quite a packet of money. Maybe he thought if he wrote me, I'd have my hand out, eh? Oh, maybe he's hiding, that could be. I often thought about Arthur and what happened to him after he left Land's End. He lived here? Oh, yes. Had a big store down by the quay. Huh? Everyone in town and from the ships would buy from him. Groceries, tackle, whatever. A general store. Did he have a wife? No, never married. I guess, William, to answer your question why we've been estranged for so long, all I can say is his way and my way are not the same. Oh, not that I ever had any proof, but there was, there was talk. About what? That sailors would bring stolen goods to him and he'd sell them for him. Well, did Uncle Arthur know it was stolen? Well, if he did, it didn't bother him. Then this man came into his store ten years ago, a sea captain he was, and he beat up your uncle so badly that finally when everything healed, one foot was three inches shorter than the other. Oh, maybe that's why he went away. He thought the man would come back. Oh, they got the man. They gave him a good long term at Dartmoor. Uh, well, are you going to tell me about his letter? What does he say? What does he want? He wants you to visit him. Huh? And to be sure to bring a gun. He says, if your son William is as stout a lad as he promised to be when I last saw him ten years ago, send him up to me by the first train after you receive this. He'll find out that to serve me will be very worth his while. I could go, you know, Father. I have another two weeks of spring vacation before I'm due back at the university. Well, we'll see, son. We'll see. Now, now, where was it? Oh. Oh, yes. If I pass away, oh, thank the Lord, there is no reason to complain as to my health. You will see that I have not forgotten my brother's son. Is he rich? Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. Don't ask me how he made his money. It certainly wasn't in eggs, bacon, butter, and hard duck. <laughs> then he goes on to say, St. Anne's is the railroad station, and then a drive of four miles to Link House, where I live. I will send the pony cart to meet the seven o'clock train, for it is the only one that stops here. Let bygones be bygones. If there has been anything between us in the past, if you should fail me now, you will live to regret it. Oh, good morning, Father. I thought I'd be on my way. Oh, so, William, you, de you decided to go. Uh, he is my uncle, isn't he? Yes, and I didn't care for his threats. Oh, maybe that's just his way. And I didn't like him saying you should bring a gun. He sounds like the same old author to me. Well, what's the difference? I borrowed Mr. Warbury's gun. He even gave me the ammunition for it. He's glad to let me have it. But you don't even know how to aim a gun. I can learn. My boy, going off like this, you're crazy. I'd better start. It's an hour's walk to the Land's End Station. Oh, I'll answer, Father. What's oh, this? A telegram for you, Father. Hey, thanks for bringing it over, Mr. Sharp. Now, what, 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 what's it say, Father? Well, it's... Uh... It's from Arthur. Oh? On no account let William get out of St. Anne's. He will find a pony cart waiting at quarter past seven at Steading Ridge, one station further down the line. He'll be taken to the guard farmhouse. He will receive instructions. Do not fail me. Don't forget to have William bring gun. Good hunting. Arthur. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Willem Hutchins, that be you. Oh, yes. I'm going to fetch you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. You're your guard. 
Is that Farmer's gun? Aye, that be me. What? No, no. I'll, I'll carry these. Well, where's the cart? I, I'd like to get out of this rain as soon as I can. This way. Miserable weather, this. Have my horse and cart over by those trees. Couldn't bring the pony. She was lame. Horse and cart? I, I don't see them. In back. Back. Didn't want no one to see. Why didn't you drive up to the station? Mr. Arthur, he said, on no account was anyone to see you. That bag heavy. No, 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 no. I, I can manage. Nobody told me I should bring an umbrella. Does it always rain like this? Ever since I was a boy. Beautiful country, though. Oh, yes, beautiful. <laughs> this part of England would be bad place to live if they could do roof over. It's an open cart. Oh, it's so. It's only six miles. I'm beginning to think my father was right. What was that? I said to me, William, he said, you're crazy. Get up. I thought you said it was only six miles. How far have we come? Two. Two and a bit. Uh, look, there's a man running across the moor. I don't like that. Big burly fellow. I wouldn't like to meet up with him on a dark night. Uh, you're going to. He's coming right for us. He's waving. He wants us to stop. I'm not stopping for him. I am mad. I am you in the water. Oh, we can't leave the man standing in the rain like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, my horse. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Don't you stop a minute. There's enough room to take another man. Hey, mate. Where are you bound for? God, Farm. Oh, which way is that? Fenchers way. Oh. If you'd been going my way, I should have made bold to ask you for the passage. Fenchers, eh? Uh, well, that's not where I'm headed for. You know the way to St. Anne. Oh, there are somewhere. Get up. Not so Get up. He's a sailor. Now, what, what's a sailor doing out in the moors? Yeah, well, but a few miles. Seemed frightened of that one. Perhaps I was. And got good reason to be. And I, I thought I'd never dry out. Oh, that's a good fire you've got here. I was told to feed you tea, let you rest, and someone will come by and take you to your Uncle Arthur. What well, seems silly for me to hang about here when I could be on my way? After the first six miles, the next four miles are nothing. Hmm. You're mighty anxious to see Mr. Arthur. Now, why don't you show me the road to take it? It's not raining. Mr. William, you seem like a nice young fellow. So I'll give you some good advice. Go back home. Let me take you back to the railroad, and you get on the next train back to where you come from. I couldn't do that to my uncle. What is it you're warning me against, Mr. Garth? Uh, what you don't know can't hurt you. Uh, it's something to do with that sailor. I, I I can't leave now. Mr. Arthur, as you call him, he's my uncle. If he needs me, I want to be there. If you value your life, you turn around and go back to where you come from. <laughs> Our story is getting curiouser and curiouser, as Alice used to say in Wonderland. Only this is no fairy tale. The moors of the north of England and those who live there are like creatures from another world. In short, Conan Doyle is saying, watch out for the unexpected. I shall return shortly with Act Two. <laughs> who have never traveled the moors. Picture rock and sand covered with heather, bracken, coarse grass, moss, and peat bogs. A wasteland, empty and desolate. Clumps of dark green trees. The only color, the rich purple of heather. Here on the moors lives Uncle Arthur. Here, waiting to be taken to his house, is nephew William. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. And then the storm. 
Oh, you brought an umbrella. <laughs> Will you listen to him now? An umbrella. These are not the streets of London. Mm, well, at least I was dry for an hour or two. Yes, they're off wet and dead. Come along with you. I thought my uncle was just a few miles from the farm. I've taken a long way round to Link House. It's the safer way. Connery. Your name is Connery. I hate Have you known my uncle a long time? If you would have put time off to the <laughs> What am I saying? Years before that? You knew me when I was a baby? I that I did. Then you've been working for my uncle for at least 20 years. Oh, I longer than that. What is all this mysterious going on? Can you tell me? I'm not the same after Williams. Now, my boy, stop, stop, stop. Why are you pulling me here? Life like beyond this man will make nearly a sound. I see him. That man with the lantern. Come on. What is it? I don't know. What I bet is probably. Right behind you. He said that big man was one of them. Who are they? I don't know. Come off it, Connery. A great big man in a seaman's coat carrying a lantern, smoking his pipe upside down, and you don't know who he is? Then why hide ourselves there watching him power? Your uncle is cleared of them. That's why he told me to take clear of them, and that's why I'm being brought in the long road. Now look there. See? That's it. Is that Uncle Arthur's house up ahead? Move carefully now. Don't want him to take us for strangers and shoot us. Why is it all dark? Is my uncle inside? He can see out, but no one can see him. Oh, yeah. That's him. It's I. Who? What? Who is it, I say? It's me, Connery. I've brought the young gentleman. We were pulled inside quickly. The door closed behind us and bolted with two iron bars and a crossbar of wood. My uncle lit the lantern. Was this man my uncle? This bloated face, those red pig-like eyes. This was my father's own brother. Here I was face to face with a stranger. And all I could think was, he's the black sheep of the family. Ah, so, nephew, you've come at last. Uh, you must be hungry, William. Uh, Connery, uh, make haste the food. Uh, come over by the fire. Uh, take off your wet things. I don't expect I'll ever be dry again. I feel like a fish. <laughs> You've got a sense of humor. I like that. Uh, uh, Connery, food, hurry. Yes, Master Hudson. Be along presently. Uh, I've had Connery with me for 25 years. There's no hurry in him. When he's ready, he's ready. <laughs> oh, you sit there, will you? I'll be right back. I want to get something to show you. I suddenly became aware of my uncle's limp. I remember the story of his having been so severely attacked that one foot had become shorter than the other. On his short leg, he wore a three-inch wooden platform boot. There it is. Ah. Look at the sign. What does it say? Arthur Hudson's provision. Yeah, uh, uh, that sign hung outside my stores and lands in for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I took it down when I left. Took it with me. I came up here to live on the moors. That sign. Oh, it reminds me always of the life I had. <laughs> Pitiful, isn't it? Twenty-five years and only a piece of wood and paint to remember them by. You miss those days, Uncle? I never look back. The message over my shoulder to see who's coming at me with a knife. 
Ah, Connery. Hey, set the plate in front of his nephew William. <laughs> Strong, stopping boy. <laughs> you did right to send for him, eh, Connery? <laughs> oh, you, you like cold mutton? Oh, yes, uh, any, anything. Mm. Hey, Connery, you, you better go and pack him. We want everything in ship shape by tomorrow evening. I... See, you've got a great many boxes against the wall. Yes, all packed and corded. Yes, William, tomorrow night, I shall be rid of these moors. Now, while you have your supper, I'll tell you about it. I can see you're the right sort. You can be tested. First, um, here's the morning news. Now, where is it? Uh, can I read that newspaper? Where is it? On the trestle table, Master Upton. Ah, yes, it's so it is, it is. Uh, now, look at this. It's 10, 11 days old. Do you know what it says? No. What, what should I be looking at? He's out. Out of Dartmoor. Six months before his sentence was served. Who is he? Uh, uh, you see this foot? Ain't the daughter it is. That's his mark. He's been doing time for that. Now, he's out. And he's after me again. Why should he be after you? Because he wants to kill me. He thinks I've wronged him. Back in Slang Inn, ten years ago. Him, his friends, are after me. Who oh, are his friends, Taylor? I knew they'd come when I saw that in the papers. And sure enough, about two days after he came out, I was looking through that window, and three of them were standing looking at the house. It was right after that. I wrote to Father. Father said I was glad to come here, but he didn't stop me. Mm. They're out there. And they found me and marked me down. Now they're just waiting for him. Why don't you send for the police? No, police are no use. I've got you. You are the one that can help me. What can I do? See those boxes? Yes. By tomorrow night, everything will be packed and ready to go. I've got friends in Leeds. And I'll be safer there. Not safe, mind you, but safer. So tomorrow you're leaving? At night. You stand by me, young man, and you'll never regret it. What do you do? Well, I'm going to the university. I'd, I'd like to study law. Ah, I'll see that you can. It takes money, lawyer education, you know that. Tomorrow night, Gus will bring the big farm wagon round, and you and me and Connery will stand up in it with our guns all the way to St. Anne's Station. Did you see any of them fellas on the moors when you came up? I saw one with rings in his ears. Uh, I know him. He's one of them. His name's Enoch. Friend of the captain. Oh, they're watching. Uh, then when Connery brought me here, there, there was another sailor. Huh? What does he like? Oh, he's a great big man. He must have been six foot tall. He, he was smoking a pipe. A pipe. How is he smoking it? Upside down. That's him. Yes, that's what he does. Smokes on the bridge of the ship that way. Well, I thought because it was raining he smoked his pipe upside down. Did you see his face? Yes, he had lots of freckles and a sharp pointed nose. I, I, I could see by a glance. Oh, that's him. That's him is here. That's him. Oh, heaven protect me now. Oh, I can't sit still and get like this, like a, like a rat in a trap. What am I going to do? Uncle, you're living in a civilized country. There is a law if people threaten you. Now, let me drive over to the county police station tomorrow morning. No, 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 no it's too late. And I'll see that those sailors are taken care of. No, 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 he's coming. He's cruel. Oh, you keep me this time for sure. There's only one chance. We must leave what we haven't packed. Leave the first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, it's worth it. Oh, I'll go. Take your gun. Who's there? Who's there, I said. Do you hear me? Look out the corner of the shutters. I, I don't see anyone. It's pitch black. It's, there's no one. There's something under the door there. Look. 
Oh, there is. Here. Oh, look, it's a, it's a note. That is... Something written on it. Read it to me. I don't have my glasses. What does it say? Oh, I can't make it out quite. I want to get closer to the fire. And there it says, uh, put, and it says, put them on the doorstep and save your skin. That's all. What do they want? Oh, what they'll never have. But all the powers in heaven, never. Not mine, it's mine. I shall never give them up. Connery! Connery! Yes, Mr. Hudson. Connery, I've been a good master to you all your life. Most of it. Twenty-five years, quarter of a century. That's longer than most folks get along. What do you want me to do now? You know the back way to the grass farm better than anyone. Go there now. Tell him I must have the wagon by daylight before the cock crows. Not to wait until tomorrow night. Not unless he wants his wagon to carry the dead. My nephew tells me they're all about us. And the captain is here, yes, here. Somewhere on the moors. Ah, he would be the one with the pipe we saw on the road. There's no time to talk, Connery. We must get clear of this or we're done for. Now remember, Connery. The wagon here first thing in the morning. Here, here, take my black coat and move slowly. I'll never see you. Here was the house. It was everywhere. Uncle Arthur blew out the lantern in the back passage, carefully unbarred the back door, let Connery out, and brought it up again. I went to the small hall window and saw Connery like a black shadow. Disappear into the woods and vanish. Only those who have walked through the desolate moors in the north of England at night know how terrifying and how lonely they can be. There is Uncle Arthur, a hunted man. His nephew is William, who came for adventure but who faces unknown revenge. And out there, somewhere, waiting. Serious Avenger. More when we return shortly with Act Three. The old man with the red, runny eyes, Uncle Arthur. The man nobody liked. Where did he make his money? Was he a Scrooge or a Scourge? His nephew, young William, doesn't really care. Uncle Arthur is in trouble. Uncle Arthur needs him. So, when he says, Will you help me, William? What a question to ask. Of course I will. We're kin. Like it or not, Uncle, we have to stick together. Ah, you're a good lad. And now, William, we have only a few hours before daylight. You'll never regret this night's work. If we come through safely, it will be the making of you. You stand by me till morning. And I'll stand by you while there is breath in my body. Now, are you frightened? More than I've ever been. I, I, I just was... Uh, never mind. Wait, wait, tell me, tell me. I, I wish I knew what I was defending and why. Uh, the less you know, the better for you. Mm, the wagon will be here by five. I'll give you back to see you behind we will need to load up and make for the early train at St. Anne's. Will they let us go? In broad daylight, they won't dare stop us. I have two guns, one for Connery, one for myself, and you have yours. Three guns. Huh. I can make it guns. Common, ordinary sailors. Oh, to steal it to at the most. Uncle, if you won't tell me what you've done to those men, can I know what it is that they want? Don't ask questions, William, and just do as I ask you. No, 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 no. Oh. We have to do something. I need that lantern. Oh, no, no, you hold it. Go to the window and shine it through the cutter. I'm holding it to the window. What do you see? Hmm? I see Connery and his black cat ah. running around in a circle. Ah. Ah, someone just cut him off. He's turning. Oh. He's coming this way now, right to the front house. Ah. 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 I'll, I'll open the door. 
Connery, it's Connery. It wasn't Connery who came in that door. It was the tall man I'd seen with the pipe on the road. The man Uncle Arthur called the captain. Behind him stood four sailors. I recognized the one with the earrings. They were ugly and menacing. Uncle Arthur turned white as a sheet. Good evening, Mr. Atkinson. Look at him, lad. What would you say is written on his face? Guilt or fight? It is Captain Connor. It's you. Yes, it's me. All right, Arthur. I borrowed your man's cape. But inside it is me. Lads, let's step forward to the fire. Close the door behind you. <laughs> Well, whatever is the matter with your foot, Arthur? Lads, will you look at our dear old friend? He's wearing some strange kind of boot. Is that the latest fashion in these parts? It's you, Tanner, who done this to me. And question if you will. Oh, yes, I remember now. Well, who might you be, young sir? Well, I am... Speak out or we'll find a way to make you. I'm Will Hudson. I'm his nephew. Oh, you yeah, know. Well, I wish the joy of your uncle and your visit, too. <laughs> we shan't be staying long, the lads and I, will we, lads? Just in and out like an oar in the sea. Ah, Tanner. Captain Tanner and your place. When did you get out of that for? Quite recently. For good behavior. For saving a warden's eye. So they commuted me six months. I thought, with all that freedom... What should I do? So I gathered my mates about me, and we went to Lamb's End to visit our old storekeeper. And keeper of other interesting things, eh? <laughs> well, imagine our surprise to walk down Water Street, and where Arthur Hutchins' sign used to hang, is now a pub. I'm sorry about that, Ma. Ten years for teaching a lesson is a long time. What's the hour, Enoch? It's light. Very light. We must be aboard before morning. Now then, any ideas what to do with Pegleg? Price him up, I say. He'll talk. Any other ideas? I was never a stubborn captain. I always listened to one of my crew if he had a good idea. I, uh... I could twist his arm ever so slowly. <laughs> Uncle, you, you give them what they want, whatever it is. Never. So you won't tell us, eh? Enoch, draw the boy up. And then give me a hand here. I think my old friend needs a little persuasion. They seized my uncle and pulled his coat and shirt over his shoulders. He sat slumped in a chair, his body shaking with cold and fear. Then they lifted him and tied each of his wrists to one of the hooks where the smoke and meat was down. Captain, I think my belt could make an impression on your friend. You coward to beat an old man. You'll be tunics if you don't restrain your tongue, boy. All right, I'm ready, Captain. Arthur, would you care for one more chance to save your eyes? Hey. I tell you, there was children for me years ago. Oh, he's a stubborn one, isn't he? You leave us no choice, old friend. Have at it, Enoch. You coward. Oh, my such language. Would you like us to tie your feet as well as your hands, Will? Go ahead, Enoch. Swing the belt. Oh, stand clear. Oh, stop, stop. I can't stand it. Oh, that belt never came near him. I'll talk. You see? I'm you, Arthur. Would listen to me? Let me down. Get me off. Please, hook. Oh. 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 I wish. Now, tell what uh. we've come for. Where are they? I'll tell you. Of course you will. <laughs> Where did you say? In my bedroom. Where would that be? Run about. Come along, old friend, and show us. Oh, uh, I don't feel too well. What's that? He doesn't feel well. Don't you hear him? You ought to be strung up, all of you, torturing this poor old man. Why, no one's laid a hand on him. Well, let him be. Uh, let me just... Let's just Captain Tanner. I wish I could trust you, Arthur, but I can't. My lads and I come all the way from Morecambe Bay because I promised them. Yeah. 
Listen, if I'm not the kind of man who doesn't trust people, because I do. But not after they've tried to cheat me. Now, I'm not letting you slip into while we're upstairs looking. On your feet, Tarzan, up the stairs, you go help him run. <laughs> caught my eyes for a moment, and I knew that look. He hadn't given up. The sailors dragged him upstairs. I was alone, my hands tied, but not my feet. Should I stay and try to help him? Or run for it, get the police to stop these rascals before they reach the sea? Stop him! Stop the old man! Oh, Lord! Listen, Mike, it was no doing of ours. The old man threw himself out the upstairs window. That's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you brute. Next, bro. He killed him. He killed him. No, he didn't. He wouldn't come across. He noticed what he stole was in here. And while we were searching, he thought he could escape. You force, of course. What's he accusing us of? Murder, that's what. And who's to say so? You young fella. Yes, are you going to be a witness against us? So it is not. The old robber jumped to his death to escape giving back what he owed. It's not our fault, believe me, nephew. The worst we ever met was to fight him and maybe take a little skin off his track. But how do we know what the boy will say? Lads, we have no quarrel with the boy. You may have no quarrel with him, Captain, but he has his quarrel with us. He'll swear our eyes away if we don't stop his way. Look! Down there by the old man's foot. You see something shiny? Knock. Hold that person lower. Hold it over the boot with the built up soul near. What? It's split open. Yes. And look what's come out of it. Gone. Just got this cooler. No, Ivan. He had him in his shoes. Look at him. Where is he? Run, my boy. Run for your life and don't look back. You'll live longer. found Connolly. They tied him up and taken his cloak and left him in the woods. We found our way to the farm. The sailors, they escaped. I stayed on at St. Anne's for the funeral and then I made Connolly come back with me to Land's End. He had no place to go and no one to take care of him. Oh, William, we can't afford to have a guest in the house. But we can't just throw him out. He... He was more than a servant, Uncle Arthur. Please, Father. Oh, don't talk to me about him. A man who never did anything for anybody. No, Connery has got to go. It's a work, Father. There are odd jobs. He's worked all his life. Excuse me, sir. I heard what you said. And of course, I shouldn't wish to outstay the welcome. But I have something here which might interest you. What is it, Connery? Master William, could you undo the string on this leather bag? <laughs> My fingers aren't as nimble as they used to be. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll just open it onto this table. What? Oh, what are they? They're not diamonds. Yes, they are, Mr. Hudson. Two fine stones. So large. Well, how did you come by them, Connery? Eleven years ago... A steamer from South Africa foundered at sea. She had some very fine diamonds invoiced aboard. And soon after that, Captain Kenner arrived at Land's End and brought your brother a packet of diamonds to sell for him. Now, how he came by them, nobody knows. Was he on the ship that went down? Was he on a pirateer that boarded and sank the South African ship? He never told anyone. Your brother decided to keep them. I told him not to do it, but he wouldn't take heed of me. And when the captain came by the next time, your brother said they had been stolen. Well, I must say, it sounds like Arthur. He was always greedy. He said the diamonds had a peculiar hold on him. He would take them out and look at them. He simply couldn't let them go. When he told the captain they'd been stolen, of course the captain didn't believe that. He beat him sorely. Now, Uncle Arthur is no more. Uh, whatever he did, he didn't deserve to die. Master William, do you remember that evening when he sent me to Garth's farm? That's when he gave me these two stones. He said, they're for you, Master William. 
for me. He said you would know how to spend them. Ah, you see, Father? And I must say, William, I am surprised. Perhaps I never really knew, Arthur. <laughs> Perhaps he wasn't such a black sheep after all. <laughs> Black sheep, then Arthur Hutchins was a strange mixture of generosity and greed. Too bad that he never learned that wise old saying riches have made more greedy men than greed has made men rich. But that's the way it is, isn't it? Avariciousness never stops until it is too late. More on this, with perhaps a word to the wise, when I return shortly. From time to time, I think I have recalled for you the wisdom of my dear grandmother. Of today's tale, I'm sure she would have said, the profits of ill-gotten gains are empty. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Black sheep, whoever you are, take note. Our cast included Jack Grimes, Ray Owens, Jackson Beck, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.